I, okay. I, I, would, I would sit there and go, you got a little bit of damage output, uh -huh. you got ability to protect yourself, not anybody else. Uh -huh. You've got Stone Case, which is like, you, you have to be stupid to get caught by that. You remember, of course, like a fake disengage and then you come back in again. Yeah, you remember the Hani Mid Medusa? I, I'm not sure if you, you got an opportunity to cast that game. Right? Dying, just, I, I might have cast it, I probably don't remember it. Okay, but, so... But enlighten me, Cap, enlighten me. So, the, I think there are certain ways to build Medusa, both skill-wise and item-wise, that actually allow her to do a lot more than people malign her with. Um, I, I think she is actually a pretty scary hero at 20 to 25 minutes. Um, it takes you building into some fairly early damage. <laughs> <laughs> it, no, 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 this, this one makes sense, man. Look at all the magic damage. I, I just love, though, the fact you can have a game with two heroes that most people would just say, I never want to play these guys. Like, there's, uh, e even in the in the TI4 videos that came out from, uh, who's that guy from uh, New Zealand that does uh, those awesome, like, all, all random, yeah, him. Yeah. Uh, and he had a, just the image of Huska sitting down there. It's like, you can't yeah. do the stage! And Huska's just there going, I'll never be a contender. Yep. <laughs> uh, Let me get Huska and Medusa in the same game. So, Huskar, I can get behind to a point here. Um, I think Huskar can be legit. I think he can be legit. Okay. But it, he does belong in the fifth pick slot. Yes. He does have to be a surprise pickup. And it's against a team that is primarily magic damage dealers. And that is what Navi US are, excluding the Faces Void. Faces Void is really good versus Huskar because he's straight physical damage it, mixed in with an amazing controlling ability. Okay, so he, he controls him when he's in the in the lowest point of his life point, so he can't actually make the most of like the, the blood. It's yeah, he can't make the most, most use of your attack speed. So what is going to happen here is that while Huskar would have been a great pickup against every single one of the members of Navi US, except for the orange player, it, it would have been great. The problem what's going to happen here is that Faces Void is going to jump in Chronosphere the Huskar uh, okay. in these sort of, sort of scenarios. Remember the magic da damage reduction only works when you get low health. So even though Faces Void is going to be an offlaner, what's going to happen is he jumps in Chronosphere. They're going to drop some bombs on Huskar. He's going to drop very, very low, very, very quickly. And he's going to get about to 30% and start taking less and less damage because that magic armor is really beginning to kick in. Except for the problem that if Faces Void has enough farm, say he has a Mask of Madness, go for a Mask of Madness this game. Hope, maybe, maybe we'll see it. It's not as popular for an offlane Void, but we'll see. If he gets a Mask of Madness, he could just finish off the Huskar, right, with all his physical damage. Yeah. So he, even though the Huskar will come to a point where he's like, I'm vulnerable versus all this magic damage, it's like, well, you're also low enough that Faces Void, even if he isn't massively farmed, can still just take you out real quickly. So uh, I, I, Huskar is interesting. Uh, this looks like it is going to be a mid Medusa if he's fed some regen here. He should be being fed some regen. He went for the Wraith Band, two Iron Branches. You so he's he. This, this is the build I want to see. I want to see like early Wraith Bands. I want to see phase boots, maybe a, a quick set of drums for um, some extra movement speed. I think that's the way you want to build Medusa. As much physical damage as early on as possible. And don't forget the power of Stone Gaze. Stone Gaze is pretty damn ex exceptional. It's it not, doesn't have the most amazing synergy with their team though. Because I, I never really feel the power of Stone Gaze when it comes to team fights. I'm like, oh, yeah. Stone Gaze! Yeah, Stone Gaze. Ah, woo -woo. Most of the time, it's because teams just don't have the physical damage to be able to, to take advantage yeah. of it. They have Serpent Warts, which is an amazing source of physical damage, but that's a fairly hard combo to execute. Um, they have Furion, who's a lot of right click damage, and the Huskar, who's um, about. 30% physical damage, right? The, most of your damage is coming from your burning spears, not your right clicks. Yeah. Well, man, we have a, uh, a Cornix Assassin. I say, I uh, say a Cornix Assassin on the off lane, but it looks like uh, he's rotated all the way down. So Korok is going to head down towards, well, what I would have assumed just to be mid is where I thought he'd go. And that's, yeah, it's in fact exactly where he's going. So we have, okay, so we have Nyx versus uh, Deucer in mid. 
We have Sneaking as the face of void on bottom lane. Now, there was a rotation coming down from both Fogged as well as 1437, but they kind of like butted heads on the trees and then just one turned around. So 1437 is going to head north to come up here and combine up with Brax. And then that's going to leave Sneaking as well as the Skywrath on the off lane. Now, Skywrath will have a great time up against Nature's Prophet. Um, mm -hmm. Then we go towards like middle lane Affinity. Like, okay, Medusa. I will reserve judgment until later, um, but yeah, don't be surprised if I don't get excited about Stonecase or if I take it satirically okay. in vain. That's um, okay. There, there's a reason she, she wasn't picked up during TI. That but it was with, sure. with Shadow Shaman as well as Earthshaker on the top lane, this top lane looks like it should be quite okay, but... Well, it's a, it's a little half lane Pugna. It doesn't really get... It's all half lane Pugna with no boots, by the way. Uh, he's, he's not solo though, because one four three seven looks like he's hovering oh, around they to are. join him. Okay, so, so it's, it's a dual offlane. It's a dual offlane. Oh, it's a dual offlane. I, I thought that they would have put something like the Wraith King uh. on the bottom lane, however, and put the Skywrath on the top, because Skywrath could at least influence the Earthshaker and the Shadow Shaman a little bit more. Yeah, than, Wraith King's like, a nice Hellfire Blast would. Yeah, because that's Ra all it is, just one stun. That's it. Yeah, Wraith King's a nice frontline hero though. He's decently tanky. Maybe, maybe that's their thought process. Um, but yeah, okay. Um, I'm down with dual lanes. I'm down with an aggro try. Either way, Navi US want to run this. I think they probably could pull it off. It's dangerous versus a Huskar, though, to go an aggressive try lane. I'll, I'll, I'll just put it at that. It's like it, they can execute it and pick off the supports. At the same time, if they overextend themselves, they're going to get punished quite heavily. Yeah. Well, into the lanes we go. So uh, Kork, well, notice he's up against Medusa in the middle lane. I'm wondering if he was considering just having something different there, but either way, Skyrath's going to come in and Fogged. Well, this is how they want to set up against Medusa. You want to go early Wraith Band? We'll just send the Skyrath in and he'll harass you out of lane with just an Arcane Bolt. Force you to burn through your early consumables. And because they're two shared tankos, mm -hmm. he can't do anything about it. Like, he can't just go for another one. Oh, that's Ooh, nice. nice. Block. This could be a big problem right now for Fogged. He's got to run himself away from this one. Attempted body block, not going to work. Korok actually having to level up stun to keep uh, Infinity away. And, well, yeah, he has it, but he never triggered it. Uh, I think Infinity was... Uh, trying to look for an opening where he could use the Mystic Snake, Snake on creeps because he knew the Mystic Snake directly put on the Skywrath Mage would not kill him. He needed wow. it to bounce a couple times and then hit the Skywrath, but... Way too sexy to go completely thrown down the top lane with just one Hellfire Blast and a, and a Pug the Blast before that. Everything else was face damage. Now the Fissure movement, and they got oh, Brax in the corner again. This rotation's been really damn good by them. One last blast is all Brax can do. He's going to give away first blood. It's going to the Earthshaker. This guy, man, that's two different Earthshaker blocks. I mean, the first one was very simple because the Skyrath Mage didn't know he was there, but still. Oh, good rotations by him. Now bottom the lane, they're going to go on Nature's Prophet. There's no seal. They can't stop the TP out. And with no level up, actually he has a level up in time lock, but Snaking was not unable to get the hit off. Yeah. Or at least the lock hit off. Uh, also, I'm, I'm more concerned about this Huskar uh, at one position because of the Faces Void not being run as an offlane, but as a as core. A core. Uh, is a one, sorry. So he, he means he will have Mask of Madness. He will have enough physical damage to threaten the Huskar. And Huskar is tanky because of his magic damage resistance, but he starts Top out lane. with no armor. You want to check this one out right now. Earthshaker, yeah. it's going to happen again. I don't know if he can lock him in, however, but 1437 slightly out of position. He needs to move up a little bit further this direction for the Fissure Block to actually work. Well, he can go for a Fissure Block right here. And there, there she is. goes. And 1437 Shackles. Probably not really required at this point, but 1437 turns around for a stun. Nothing's going to come of it, though. And now it's two for zero. Raid King goes down the top lane. So both heroes in the, in the dual offlane of Navi US have gone down. Things are going surprisingly well for... Um their Power of friendship. Looking, their, their gold is looking good. You keep looking at both teams. Like, what it is? Come on now. Mercy. Mercy on the poor casters. You're, you're, you created a team name that we're, we're saying for the first time. And it's like officially put into the, into the grid as well. So this is what you'll be flagged on as yes. all websites as well as VOD entries. But it's just like, it's Hello Moto. Is all I read yeah. when, I, when I read their name. Which, uh, stands for Mario on the one, but Mario's a support player, so that must be some sort of joke. Because <laughs> he, he's never on the one. Ooh, nice aggressive observer what? Brax can have a real rough time now. I'm almost wondering if it's worthwhile uh, rotating the Void up towards the top lane once he cracks level 6. I know you want to see the Mask of Madness over on Snaking, 
but at the same time, they need Brax to find levels and farm. And more importantly, they need Brax to force out that bottom tier one tower and get some kind of reaction from Modo. A Modo, damn you! <laughs> Power of friendship. <laughs> there it is. Just think, um, Poff. Yeah. I think Poff. Sure. They call it Poff. <laughs> like profiteroles, but poff. We're going to have uh, Navi smoking up and making a rotation with their supports. They're setting out the bait for a rune. Um, they're expecting one of the supports to come Can't check the four-minute rune. Thoughts. Unfortunately, uh, Mario either knew or he was just lucky, but he, ba he backed away. Yeah. He didn't actually go for the rune check, so he must have known somehow. Well, there's a lot of rotation coming out towards the top now. He doesn't oh, know boy. because Brax is right behind him. Oh, They're going for the blast. The Hellfire blast will now fly out. After get the Crypto fight, which instantly cancels the shackles, the and then with Skyrath Mage following Close up, in. Mario will go down. Way too sexy, running himself away. The blast will also connect, but we've got orbs, concussive shots. That Fissure is going to push 1437 back. So a lot of damage on him to Crypto fight, saving him from the right clicks of the, of the Degenerate. And now Shaker, well, there's no follow up, so he's just trying to beat down on top of 1437, but they have enough damage. The general is able to get the last hit on that one, but they bring four heroes to defend on this lane. This is not what you want to be doing if you're power of friendship. Because it's left the face boy completely open on that bottom lane. Yeah, it's not bad though. Jin is still Bottom picking up a decent amount of experience. He's falling slightly behind, but he was critical in, in order um, to actually get that kill. So I think the time is worth it for them. Stun I mean, on middle lane. They need to help out Blast to follow up right now. They got it too. Korok was prepping for this. He realized there was a regeneration rune inside the Medusa, but yeah. dropped the mana down low enough that even if she did get the shield up, it would have been a protection one up on top lane. For the first time, Switch won't get the fissure right. The Brags, the shackles will still go over the top of the seal, stopping the shackles, but he did burns to the Huska. Yeah, what do you do there in that situation? Like, you can't decrepify yourself or else you're taking extra damage from the Burning Spears. And unfortunately, Skyrath Mage can't do anything because uh, he's not really well known oh, for amazing Oh, Curious be dying! Yeah. Dyer's has Chappie, been the Honorless Baboon. Got him! Radiant's middle tower is under that's, that's the name of the courier. Wait. Sh shout out to uh, Chappie, the old manager. Man, Complexity is a team name I have not heard in a while. Yeah. There's, there's it's actually... okay. Ch Chappie might be coming back on the scene, apparently. Oh, by the way, uh, we actually have a, a team which is meant to be playing today, and I, I was not expecting this, and I don't know how they're actually playing in this regional qualifier. Uh -huh. uh, but Terra Firma Esports oh. will be our, our first... Uh, Bullet vs. Terra Firma Esports will be our first game of the MSI uh, Beta Qualifiers coming up next. Oh. So we'll, <laughs> it's, it's a day of first. We'll have both the French as well as the, uh, the Rando team, uh, Team Tinker, playing today on, here on our live stream. So, Rando. Hope, hope, well, it, it, it correct really term is. would be international, maybe, but... <laughs> Rando is much more fun to say. They're they're like they're like a <laughs> that's not it. I they're like a buffet, a little bit of everything, you know, and possibly also very very contagious. So checking out Infinity's build hasn't really done so much uh, too much since he's had to play so passive in his lane with all the rotations. Um, but way too sexy. He's obviously farmed up a lot. He's probably going to be going for an arm. Armlet is a great item for a Huskar um, for several re reasons. But I think one of the um, one of the reasons that people don't think about is armor. Armor, armor, armor. Armor is important on a Huskar because he has a decent HP pool, but he's no armor whatsoever to speak of. And, and that just lends yourself to being gimped by physical damage, nice. which is where that face of Void is going to be coming in later. Yeah. Boyd's almost finished up his Mask of Madness as well. And we're only seven and a half minutes into the game with his Chrono. And with also the, the Vampiric Aura, it's allowing them to force out this tier one tower on the bottom lane. And there's no one from uh, there's no one from Power of Friendship that wants to come and stop this. Like Earthshaker with a Fissure. At least Earthshaker's got some Arcane Boots. That's, that's a nice thing for him, but like that just means a little bit of range Fissure spam to yeah. slow down the attacks, but that, that's all. Yeah, you can't blame uh, anybody from Power of Friendship not waiting to go bottom because it's guaranteed kill. Yeah. Like, whoever shows it's, up, in it's, fact, it's even it's this to Chrono to no, Hellfire Blast once the Chrono wears off attack. and a Skywrath Mage to drop a nuke. Well, that's once, not even his big one either. Once Snake King has his Mask of Madness, it's probably just a solo kill. Like, he probably doesn't need any extra help. He's going to get it, though. You're going to DD Nyx Assassin with Vendetta. 
Yeah. Like that that in itself is probably more scary than anything else I'm seeing on this map. Now he's gonna use his bottle charge to get the illusion rune. Uh TP up towards the top lane, so his TD's still remaining, but goes straight to Vendetta. Oh, where's before the counter wards? He's, he's gonna go into Vendetta before he gets in range of the observer ward, and he does so. Now you're right, there's no sentry wards available. They have split. they haven't flying the fact he's missing, and this is way too. I don't know if you'll die oh, for one, wow. he's leaped in! Oh, you were gonna pop way too. He's gonna miss the stun. Where's the stun? There goes the stun. Probably bouncing through. Brax, so low in life. The nether board is up and running. One last blast. It does not help him out here, but Goro still with the DD rune. How much damage has he got? Not enough. And the orb actually turns. Oh, we're following, we're following. Okay, we probably shouldn't because bottom lane's getting a kill. I've lost the orb. Where's the orb? Where's the orb? Toby, Snake King's gonna fall in the bottom lane. No, he makes the- No, he doesn't! The arrow! Arrow! Wow! He has to backtrack it. 1437's got him body blocked up a little bit. And he walk himself away to safety. Oh. Well, Medusa did something. He got a right click in. That she did. She did. Obviously, ability's not important. It's just basic damage output. Oh. 1.37 and Brax are prepping themselves for the bottom lane. They're waiting for Degenera just to walk himself basically past this line. The second he does that, they get the kill. But they'll see with the Observer Ward he's backing up. They can't jump themselves over to attack. So yeah, they just have to put nice. force out the lane the old-fashioned way. I, I have to say, I'm super impressed. Like, uh, I've never heard of this player. Um, he, his other name is MJW. I have no idea who he is. Um, but I'm MJW? impressed with his play so far. Now, if you modify he's, that a little bit, I'll be saying, oh, it's my jumpers. But, yes. He's moving around the map a lot. Uh, he's got really good awareness. Like, for example, that last top engagement, he had a right click on the pug and immediately kept moving and dodged the blast because of it. Like, his individual like his individual decision making is on cue, and also his his mechanics are pretty on point. Like, he's he's had some pretty good reactions so far. Snaking's coming in. He's got Mask of Mana, Sleep Up, but no Chrono. He's gonna look for a time lock hit, but with the, uh, okay, Prophet. Oh, yes. <laughs> he sprouts, he ulties, and now they just back up. 1437 coming, a big brunt to that attack as well from the Wrath. But the Fish unable to connect, and Brax will already just TP himself back out to safety. In fact, he comes up towards, uh... Oh, actually, where did, he, where did he go? He just went... Did he did TP to the tier... Wait, what? Who are you talking about? Oh, uh, no, I'm, I'm just I'm just screwing with myself right now. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can't help you there, Toby. Chrono's on the top lane. It's going on Mario, Two and the Skyrath made stick at the Mystic Flare off in time. I, I didn't think it's going to actually reach him. And now looking for the kill over on Huskar. There's your first time log. Your Mask Man is triggered again, so the high move has been allowed Sticker to keep up with this one. Good cut him shot. They steal him up, and they will bring him down. Double kill coming in now for one, and Bra Brax on the bottom lane. Netherworld, the Crimson Fire actually protecting himself. He's gonna go for the drain over Infinium. The two stuff that she almost killing herself off there. Use Stone Gaze even at the same time. And to generate the slowest attack, attack I've seen in a very long time from an Aegis Prophet uh, to bring down Netherworld. But the tier one towers can force on the top lane, so even if uh, you do see a power of friendship force out the tier one tower in the bottom lane, it's just giving you a straight trade up with the tier one tower. Yeah, I think they they could go for the fight because there's no chrono as well as the Earthshaker already setting up. Oh, They're double gonna go TPs. for it. This, yep, with no chrono, where's way too gonna jump to? Skywrath, he's really low on life, but the pitch connecting over on him. The general they've sealed up. But already Huskar has made the pounce while on bottom lane. Oh, 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 you got the shackles! He got it in time, the problem is he's got no other hex, but the double stun will now come from Korok. He has five carapace of Barbel. He actually triggers it off, but not in time to actually get the return damage and stun into the Earthshaker. So now he's in a lot of- Oh! oh I guess that's not enough damage! Korok will survive on 55 life points. Alright, a mis mistakes were made. Yeah, that was, that was a misplay from Mr. Swish, but honestly, that it was pretty close. Like, it, it that it would take two extra hits from the Shadow Shaman. He just slightly overestimated the amount of damage he could do with an Echo Sun. Or maybe underestimated the high amount of armor the Nyx Assassin has, where the Shadow Shaman just can't do enough right quick damage. Is under attack. All right. Tier 1 tower was man up on top lane while all that was going on. Uh, middle lane, though, is going to be completely pushed out. 1437 is basically the night watch on the front lines. Fallen. Searching for anybody to come that comes in close. Degenerate went for the Midas build, by the way, on the Nature's Prophet. Um, we also have the Medusa, who is not going for the build um, that I was talking about earlier. It's a uh, very early physical damage mixed in with um, some movement speed build. 
I, I think it's pretty strong on Medusa, but that's just me kind of theory crafting and, and going off of what Hani played with earlier. Um, Infinity is going for a lot of stats, and this shouldn't really surprise too many people because of it, it, tanky heroes are good versus faces void because you can't really avoid getting caught in the chronosphere sometimes. So if you can just naturally tank up and survive through to a chronosphere long enough to get off some abilities, I think it's good enough. This so. is going to be a pointless gank right now from... Uh from Power and Friendship, and they know it too. Like, 1437 is sitting there with Reincarnation. They got mass open wards available, so they could actually kill them twice over because of that. But now, yeah, they didn't want the initiation, but they might just have to do it anyway to put his ulti on cooldown. But Skyrat's gonna back up as well. If they had the Fisher block there, I think the. I don't know, sometimes ganking a Wraith King can be worth it because if you have such an overwhelming force against the Wraith King and you're able to just kill him twice, not only do you kill that hero, but you also put his ultimate on cooldown. Uh, if it's a level 1 ult, it's on cooldown for so long. So it's, it's almost a 5 minute cooldown. So it's just, uh, sometimes the gank is worth it. If they had the Fisher block, they could have gone for it, but... Unfortunately, that missed, and that now means that Korok is going to have a lot of opportunities to find some extra pickoffs. Well, Korok's looking for one, and uh, Mario ships in the night. Yeah, that was... The, the, I'm so really surprised that the Fog of War actually went like that, too. Uh, now he'll see him in the middle lane, so Mario... If he backs up just a little bit too far, and Korok's just like, screw it, I'm just going to go in. Stun, mana burn, for dead hit, blinks himself away. The Fog of was bouncing around as well to try and slow it. Maybe getting some kind of collateral damage, but it's all too late. And they're just going to feed some trees in the middle lane. Frags won't pug the blast to take care of that. Plus, he's going to save his man to try and force out the mid tier 2 tower. So the Dusa is costing them, despite the fact that uh, Huskar is, especially once he get ar gets armlet, he's a very aggressive hero, and they have a Furion for pushes. The Medusa is what's costing them um, all their map control because she's just not a hero who can do much right now. So because of that, they're not actually able to be on the offensive and take any towers down. So they're losing out on gold. They're losing out on map control. And this is just going to continue to get worse and worse unless the Huskar can pull out some big plays. Because well, even being on the defensive, man, Huskar can't do anything while Chrono is up. Because if he does it and his armor just keeps ticking out, he's going to lose his life points fast and he's going to be able to regenerate them up because he can't toggle either, which means you've got, you got double sense of burst damage coming his way. And the tier 2 tower on the top lane, they can't find that one out either because where is your initiation coming from? Shadow Shaman kind of has to like come at point blank range to get a shackle off, which is only level 1, and the Hex is only level 1. So they want just straight burst damage with like the level 3 Aether Shock, and they're going to go for Roshan. Alright, so if you can't take fights, which I really don't feel they can, they just try and take Roshan. The problem is, their entire team is missing, and now Korok just walks himself in inside of Vendetta. There's no sentry wards, which means that Vendetta hit, stun, Chrono will come out from sneaking, and actually, while it might be completely wafted as far as not hitting on heroes, it kept out the Earthshaker as well as the rest of them. Now Huska, also separated from the rest of his team, leaves himself in a water fog, able to pick up a kill, sneaking, trapped for the moment inside the shackles, Echo Slam as well, but he leaves himself away, the attack from the Shadow Shaman follows through. It gets the kill, it's a triple kill, Coming the way of Brax, and now Reincarnation will bring 1437 back to life again. Caught inside the scratch, he's got one health fire blast, and will just TP out. No point throwing it out, because he knew he could oh, get himself away to safety. There were no stuns left. Earthshaker was basically... Actually, he had a, he had a vision, must still be on cooldown. Uh, it was it was on cooldown, just a little bit too long. Whoa, Korra! Uh, yeah? Okay, that's aggressive. Uh, <laughs> Nobody hit him, so he just blinked away. Yeah, well, and now he knows there's no mana on the, on the Earthshaker, so again, there's no stun. So he's just freely walking in. He's got Vendetta as well. What are they going to do? Mana drain him? Well, he's got such high armor. The right clicks are just not enough to, to threaten him right away. So he just successfully stopped Roshan being, from being taken. Yep. And that, by the way, was a buyback from the um, the Nyx Assassin to do that. But there was also a buyback from the Medusa in order to come back into the team fight. Yeah. She did that so quickly, too. Yeah. It's a good thing they slid those tier two towers up so she could return to the fight quick. All right, so Roshan's not being done right now, but Korok is on the hunt, and he found one. He found Infinity, and he found Mario, and he found a courier, and uh, cannot make a decision. He came in range of the tower, however, so it is quite... It, it, okay, the courier. Okay, the sentry ward at the back line. He's, he's managed to grab the creep wave up, and still managed to grab the creep wave up again. 
The Rujan's being done while they're worried about him. Fisher, oh. nicely on Snake, the wards will come down. Rujan killed by the Raiden and picked up as well by Fate Floyd. Now the Corona, they're draining the line for the half cut. The armor's turned on. The oh, okay. Medusa getting double stunned up with Mario. The Mystic Flare popping up a lot of his mana. One charge will now go. Korok by Karma, no longer protecting him. He'll go down alongside the Raid King while snaking, running himself away on that bottom lane. Really, while they may have, may have taken Roshan, they might lose a little bit more here. The mid push is coming. They'll lose a tier one tower. Yeah, finally. Finally, Kyle and Friendship are going to be able to get themselves some sort of tower goal. Um, that was what was seriously missing. It's why it seems so many people are so underfarmed. Medusa as well as the Huskar. felt like they just didn't fallen. have any items, and it's because they don't have the tower gold to compare. Um, finally, they do get that mid tower. Now they're going to back up and farm. Uh, I can't say, like, I'm in total agreement with the Nature's Prophet build. Um, but I've been impressed by most of, his, most of his plays so far. He went for the Midas and then now a Dagon build. Which is going to allow him to kill Rock Prophet. <laughs> Evaporation! Radiance bottom tower is some significant damage to the tier 1 tower because of it. Yeah, maybe I'm actually okay with the Dagon. Uh, I mean, it's versus a Pugna, a Skywrath Mage. Both of those heroes are super squishy, and one of them is a core. On top of that, you have Decrepify on the side of Pugna, so he can't really use Decrepify to save his allies anymore, or else he just leaves them susceptible to that burst damage. It's not bad. Top play movement, 1, 4, 3, 7 is going to go down, Snake is going to come in, but oh, nice. he has no chrono, 7 seconds on cooldown, and the stone gaze just slowed him up, so he had to turn himself around, and he could not follow, now he'll leap up, chrono's available, but he's just he's a little bit too far away, now he's got to do it, uh, degenerate, okay, he can reach him through the sprout, oh. actually, yeah, oh, they're going to chase down Snakey though, with that jump from way too sexy, no backtrack, nothing, Brack tried to drain the life away, but Huskar sealed up, the Aegis Immortal will be going here, and way too on two life points, the Void will come back to life again. And he could leap and try and go for a time lock, but it'll be very, very risky to do so. Especially considering Brax must TP back to base, which he can't. It's 30 seconds on cooldown. He's going to walk. But the bottom tower has been pushed out by Korok. We keep forgetting about this next assassin. Medusa does, and she comes down with split shot turned on, forcing him back. While up on top lane, we'll set that out it again. Mystic Flare, oh, almost whopping timing. down the uh, second match he fought. Now, there's way too. Double kill for him. And the Mass Serpent Wards, actually, they're attacking on... Okay, yeah, okay, they're good. They're good. So, um, way too sexy, something very smart there. You have to time your life break sometimes really well. You don't want to be pulled back too far in clutch scenarios. Um, this time, though, Prophet. he chased the face's void. There's a sentry the ward. Lapse. Korok's coming into a trap right now. They can see him. Hex, as well as Jackals, and uh, Dagon was already using the initial burst damage. Man, now the US in this game right now. They are. Just the last couple minutes, this game has turned down rather dramatically. And we do have mech up for the Pugna, so they may try and push some tier twos now off of Chronosphere pickoffs. But um, and they do still have the late game. But in general, this is where power friendship kind of get um, a certain power spike just because of the Huskar. The Medusa obviously will get them a lot of late game. The Medusa is exceptionally strong versus the Faces Void though, uh, because if you notice the last time. Um, when the face of Void tried to teleport to the top lane. Yeah. They didn't know Chronosphere was on cooldown for just a couple seconds, but the immediate reaction from the Deuce is to pop the ultimate. Yes. And it's it's very tough for a face of Void to lay down Chronosphere, run past the Medusa, and not get stoned up in time. And even if he does, he's probably going to be just slowed up uh, quite a bit. So the Medusa is actually a really good counter from Stone Gaze against the Chronosphere. Yeah. And it also includes all the allies who are outside of the Chronosphere helping to burst down some of the heroes that are inside. Uh, because if they stare too long, they will also be stunned up. I'm still wondering what the effect of Korok is meant to be on this game. His net worth is actually quite low. 5.7k with the three deaths to his name. Obviously, he's lost a hell of a lot here. Uh, like. Movement with Vendetta, there's no burst damage to fall off apart from a blink deck. Now he's gonna be found out. Three heroes just jump on him. Nasa wants as well, and they caught Branks also very close. There's Dake on attack, and Branks can't drain in time. Skyrath, however, trying to bring up Generator, and he will be successful. So it's a two for one trade off here. The offlane, technically, your two cores. And 1437's also okay. He's gonna realize the fact that Mario just brought it up. But at the same time, you've got Infinity taking the tier one tower in the bottom lane. 
It's a huge injection of money and experience coming away with Dynasite. And if this continues to happen, now the US might find themselves very quickly out of island. Yes, uh, the, the Huskar is, is so is scary right now because he's got armor to protect himself from the faceless void. He's got a mass amount of strength between the Ogre Club plus the armlet um, being turned on. And he's now got the sustain offered to him from Helma Dominator, which is super important um, because it means he can actually stand up against the faceless void when he's gone on. And once the Chronosphere fades, way too sexy, he can turn onto the faceless void and be able to keep himself alive with the mass attack speed he'll have at low health and the sustain offered to him from Helmet Dominator. Yeah, it's, it's smart. I know, I know I was laughing about it because these heroes are just very, very rarely played, but it looks like Power of Friendship are making them work. Mm -hmm. They've got to keep them working, though. Like, and I think the other thing is the fact they keep, keep getting more and more openings. The fact that Korok got caught out by a sentry ward up on top, he gets caught out catching out the bottom rune. This is buying them a lot of space to move around. Yeah. Um, even Mario, like Mario, he's getting very close to his level 2 ultimate. In fact, sorry, he already has his level 2 ultimate, what am I saying? Uh, so he's got that one. The Urshik's managed to find his blink dagger. The, these supports are going to do some serious work, and these supports are meant to be food for Korok. He's meant to walk around the map, snipe them out, move on to the next target. But yeah. it's just not happening, and now he's having to build into a four stuff as well. This, yeah. this isn't the killer Nyx assassin we're used to. Not when you run him as a core. The the point of the Nyx assassin is to be able to create a lot of room, right? He's he's strong versus some of those squishy heroes you were talking about. Um, he's an excellent pick off in that regard. But he was also supposed to create a lot of room for Navi US, whether that was allowing them to actually take down towers or just to give the void Dyer's more room to farm up. Unfortunately, with the last pick of Medusa, it means that you don't necessarily have the late game intact. Because y you might be creating the room, you might be starting this game out, but you are also starting the game out for a Medusa as well. Man, these uh, these illusions are being a real nuisance right now, but the tier 2 tower is about to go down. Uh, two towers being destroyed off. The fish will fly. But there's no real, like, follow-up gonna come into this one. Earthshaker, he's gonna oh, blink, right. and they found one. They found the Pugnero from the side, but Mario is gonna get caught out in the Mystic Flare. Now the Grip of Fire and TP out, Echo Slam from the Earthshaker. That's the way to cancel, and Brax will die now. They at least got the ES ulti down. It's a one-for-one -one trade off with two Tier 2 towers going the way of Navi US. For, for what other trade? Like, the Tier 1 town looks like it died on the top lane. But that's it. Yeah, let's see, uh, BKB was just picked up by Snake King, so they got a little additional out of that as well. But it looks like 1437 is going to, they they realize this game is going to be going late. Uh, they couldn't really utilize the Pugna well enough. They didn't have enough control over the early to mid game that they could just take down all the tier twos and go uphill nice and early on an over farmed void. So instead what they're gonna be falling back on is late game. I talked about the problem with that because Medusa is obviously very strong late game carry. Um, so to hedge their bets, they're also making 1437 turn into a semi carry. He already has his Midas as well as an arm left. He's actually got another 1900 gold on top of that as well. Not too shabby at all. Lines being drawn from Navi US. Head up towards the top lane. Try and find a pick off somewhere. So I kind of expected Way Too Sexy to go for a... Well, hold on. Yeah, Snake yeah, well, gonna get it watch the top lane, man. Korok's coming in and again, the Sentry Ward is being dropped off. So Korok's aggressive movement getting flagged again. The warning has been, like, perfect timing mm -hmm. coming out from, uh, from Power of Friendship. They've done an excellent job so far. I mean, they've grouped up a lot, um, and it may have cost them some farm here and there, but it's much better than being snowballed against by Nyx Assassin. <laughs> so, um, way too sexy went for a full SNY. I was almost expecting a halberd. Um, evasion obviously doesn't help you against a faceless void, but the disarm is really good. I uh, remember what we were talking about earlier last game. You should always get off your blink. You should always get off your um, disarm as well yep. when a faceless void jumps in. So I, I think it's actually pretty legit, but um, way too sexy win for the uh, more, not passive, but you, you don't have to do anything with an SMI. Boy, jump up. Krono is going to catch out too right now. They nuke down the Shadow Shaman, and then we'll move over to Medusa, and wow, she died quickly. With no shield to protect. 
died insanely fast, and this isn't possibly the worst timing as well. There's an Alpha Wolf, which is controlled by the helm of the Dominator. It's just sitting in there watching Roshan. Now, that one belongs to... That, that's way too sexy. Yeah, it's way too sexy. So he knows that Roshan is up and running. But at the same time, without the Medusa and without the Shadow Shaman, I don't know if they can actually contest Roshan. He's going to go for a kill. Uh, but this... Okay, why? This makes no sense. You're going to get critted up. The TP oh, up by one point. Oh, he immediately even loses ultimate. Actually, yep. he does. Wait, he and died. No! Oh, wow! He actually TP'd himself back, but he dragged him back to the bottom lane. Now... That, that should not happen. Then. No, it shouldn't, because his body actually legitimately in the back out, back at base. Yeah. I followed him the entire way. Yeah, you click on the Wraith King, he was inside the fountain. Yeah. But his tombstone was where his TP used to be. That's odd. There well, was, uh, well there, that, that has happened in the past, though, where you take the final point of damage uh, <laughs> in the lane, but your body will still be dragged home by the TP scroll. Yeah, there's currently a video going around where in a, in a pub they Lich bought back instantly and ended up going right back to where he died. Yeah, I saw that one, but that was because uh, toss animation. Yeah. Because it says, like, you toss you up in the air, but it says you will end up at this point when you land. Right. So that's what it's all about. Now, wait to, with that more bonus damage, he just ripped through Roshan. Oh, yeah, man. Huskar, low health. Look at it go. Got a machine. Now, when I, when I said um, earlier, it was, it was probably an overestimation in general, but when I said earlier, like, 30% of your damage is physical, uh, that, that applies to, like, the early game, the first 20 minutes for Huskar. Now, Huskar is a big physical damage threat um, because he's finally getting some strength items, and when he does get low enough on his attack speed, he's laying out so many attacks in a row. If he actually has the wolf, Alpha Wolf behind him, I think he can actually win a straight 1v1 up against Faceless Void, yep. which is tough to say. Not many, many heroes. There, there are very, very few heroes that actually can make that kind of call. But Oscar might be able to with the right inner vitality. As long as he doesn't have to fight instead of a Chrono, I think he's also quite good there too. Uh, Faceless Void has got a nice injection of money and a full Mjolnir is over on snaking. As well as uh, 964 gold. He's under attack. He's BKB with Master from Wars at the bottom. This is the time, but he just TP'd back to base. He can't come out to this tier 2 tower. Radiant so there's no point, there's no point coming forward. The BKB also wasn't up on the Pugner until just now. And they're running out. Look look what Kurok has been forced to. He's, he's getting yeah. sick of getting caught out. <laughs> he has to walk around with a gem and try and do some D warding. Unfortunately, Veeam is going to find this ward like 30 seconds before it's going to expire. So it's already done most of the work. And he's missed the regeneration rune up on top river too. So we haven't seen too many professional Huskars. Oh, he missed it and Way Too is going to take it. For Sorry. obvious reasons. Um, but I'm interested to see what Way Too Sexy's next build is. Does he go for a heart here? Well, you and go just max out his survivability and also increases his damage? Well, well why, why would you or... go for heart when you could probably just pick up a Satanic and combine them up with your Helm and Dominator? You That's still true. get your strength to searching for and it's going to give you su your survivability during the fight. The only thing yeah. I would be concerned about for him uh, will be having something like a BKB. Like, Chrono is still going to be a problem for you, but you need to have some kind of extra immunity. Yeah. Your damage output's already going to come from, from your hero when you drop low. Yeah, Satanic um, yeah. probably makes um, a bit more sense than a heart, but the reason I said heart was just because of the fact that he needs to make sure he isn't bursted down inside of the Chronosphere. Um, yeah. In which case, heart gives you a little bit of extra strength, but Satanic probably, probably makes you more can just sense. Keep your armlet on the entire time too. Yeah. So I would say armor is the Way best two. bet for gonna him. Gonna get though. jumped up, never got his armlet off, and uh, he's gonna take a lot of damage because it's Hellfire Plus. Well, meanwhile, Snakey gonna get picked off, but Way Two tries to turn around and fight this one. One four three seven. Remember, Way Two has still got Aegis the Immortal. One four three seven, of course, has reincarnation. So he's also gonna armlet toggle out this one. Mystic Flare to be dropped. Drop is gonna try and come in to help him out, but it's already a little bit too late. Rainy blow on life. But in comes Infinity. They'll bring down the Wraith Keeper. That's just triggering up his ultimate. Slowing down the heroes, I realize, generates to the tree line. Nice, nice actually, dodge. like, uh, Mana Style. Uh, able to dodge out the stun. But now he's in real trouble. Hellfire Blast coming back off cooldown. And, uh, well, with the rest of the team around him, he will drop. Meanwhile, yeah. Void, he died down here next to the Dire Observer Ward. So just a little bit up towards the tree line. So it was still a heavy trade off there. But Navi US coming out on top because they burnt the Aegis. Oh yeah, absolutely. That was way too sexy, being too far forward, being overconfident about Huskar's strength right now, and then the overcommitment from the rest of Power Friendship in trying to actually help out the Huskar. They should have just given him up and split pushed where they could. But hard to say. Assault Curas finished up. 1437, man. This guy has turned into a full carry mode. 
with a big luxury item like that. He's super scary. Way too sexy. Uh, picked up a Hyperstone. I said armor would probably make the most sense for him, so I'm going to say Assault Curas for that. Uh, did, did you touch on snaking? Um, I did not. With the quarter staff he's currently walking around with. Now, I would ask the question, is this refresh for double chrono? Or are we looking at, like, just an item which will, you'll convert into butterfly later on? Yeah, I... Because I, I don't see him building an orchid up against this lineup. No, no, that's that's got to be butterfly. Even though um, Refresher is really good on Faceless Void, and it was probably what from last game that Ring of Health was probably going to be going into would be a Refresher. True. Um, so it's that, a really that, weird way to start it, though. Yeah, it, it makes. I guess it it makes more sense. The the item pickup makes more sense now. But um, I I would say no. I don't think you should be going Refresher. Um, if you go Refresher, you should have an Agonims first. Um, in my opinion, to make the most out of that extra ultimate. So I would say 100% this should be a butterfly. All right. I mean, he's already going for a damage dealing build anyway. It makes sense to continue on that thought process. Four man smoke movement now from Navi US. So uh, they come in towards the middle lane. There's only fake deuces there, but they're running them towards the top lane. And Korok is the man who's going to get scouted out straight away. Someone walking around with some kind of detection. It's the gem over on the Earthshaker. That's how they, they saw Korok. But now way too. He's out here by himself with, uh, uh, I hate to say, man, but your detection is sitting a little bit further back next to the tower. So he's got to be careful with a four-man smoke movement up. They're running up the lane, and now, okay, there's two heroes, the two cores that could easily go down. Void has Chrono. He can catch three heroes right now with the Earthshaker. He blinked himself away, but the Infin Infinity going to get completely nuked down. The Drain's already over on way too safe. He's thinking trick of the BKC. The Massive was way hey, leaping it even deeper to evaporate that Shadow Shaman. At 1437, there's Blast. Way too has been held back. There's no creep wave here for Navi US. They're not going to force us in towards the tower. This was a pure kill mission only. So it is going to be a refresher for a faceless void. Hmm. Yeah, this is the way I would have seen you build the the, uh, the refresher before. Instead of getting the ring of health, yeah, you like, you'd actually the... get the oblivion stuff first. Yeah, oblivion stuff. Much better. But so, okay. I mean, Refresher is still really strong for Faces Void. He doesn't necessarily have to focus on damage because 1437 is doing so oh, much for him right now. Uh, he just walked past the Earthshaker. <laughs> Earthshaker will blink down. He does still have Echo Slam available. If he threw it out right now, we'd actually have the kill. He's waiting at four stuff away. And now Degenerate's going to maybe even die. The Orb wasn't thrown out, though. And Korok into Vendetta. He wants... He wants... He wants him dead. Korok, blink, blink. Korok, why? Korok, why didn't you just run, buddy? He, he like, fended it away. He, he, he won blinked a billion times. He wanted the pick up. He, he really wanted that Earthshaker's gem gone. But now he's basically given Earthshaker a gem for each eye. While oh, Snaking is going to solo kill Mario. But the Chrono is in the eye. The Fissure will go, but he's still got time to walk away. Death. So the even the 4 star up onto a total stop wouldn't be successful. But up on top lane, Brax, Dagon attack. Haskar leaping, but Brax able to TP back out in time. He triggered the mech just in case the burn would be enough to kill him off, even in the, in the protection and healing of the well. Mystic Snake is going to follow him, though, I think. I, I was waiting, in fact, for uh, for the Huskar to follow him if you got the timing wrong. Because that's that, deals, that that does still work, doesn't it? They know they patched a couple of the uh, the global repositioners. I I don't think you should. No, I I don't think Huskar follows that. Either. That was fixed. Okay. So no no more global jumps. Any any sort of leaps, blink daggers, any of those sort of things, Huskar will still follow. But straight up teleports are a bit too much. Bit too much for him to handle. Or at least I hope. I hope that's been fixed by now. <laughs> and Nature's Prophet is gone for what is normally considered a pump troll build. Because there's, there's no Blink Dagger, there's no Mouse yeah. to force anything out, it's just E Blade with massive level Dagon. So it's five level, five level Dagon as, as well as E Blade. So that's basically a guaranteed kill. Actually, I won't say guarantee kill over on the Skywrath Mage. Initially, I was like, maybe it could even be on the Wraith King, but really, Wraith King's gotten really, really farmed. Yeah. Uh, it, so probably not. But Pugna, definitely. That's an instant kill. Yeah, if, it, if he doesn't get off his mech or BKB in time, it's just one, two before he can react, he's probably going to die. But then again, like he's going to have time to do it because you don't have any kind of repositioning 
abilities coming out from Degenerate or items to help him with that. He's got Phase Boost to run himself in, and that is all. Basher now picked up by 1437. He's going to be picking up an Abyssal to go with his high amount of attack speed from Assault Kiras. So he is going to be a Bash Lord now. Uh, another good counter versus the Huskar. So they, they now have two different heroes that are exceptionally strong versus Huskar, which is where the Medusa needs to start taking over. Unfortunately, it is not 70 minutes yet. So Infinity uh, still needs his team to draw this out for at least another 30. <laughs> this makes it sound so easy. Yeah. 70 minute Medusa, man. It is real. You, you'll get there. You'll get there. Now, way to jump on middle lane. They go on 1437. But remember, 1437 is the bait. The Chrono will go on way too sexy. Well, I guess Sneaky's gonna walk around the pitch and then lock him with the hit. There's your hit. Sneaky actually goes stone gazed up for the moment. The Degenerate are caught out by Korok. So it's gonna be a two for one trade off here with the Skyrim Mage going down. And Ray Thing still hasn't died yet. Now Korok jumping in. He wants his what? Alpha Wolf? While uh, Sneaky, he wants the bigger prize. It's Mario over on the side. And Infinity's already back up and living again. I just say that because he didn't die. Time to go uphill. And <laughs> we have enough. I don't know if they really do have enough. Like Mystic Snake's going to cause them some problems here. But there's no Chrono. 30 seconds still on cooldown for it. But the Thunder Blast attack. is actually helping them. Like you can't I forget about that one. Just how much the Blast will bring down the tower. So Frag just waits out the last bit of the fortification. Throws out, and there goes the tower. And well, they can bring down two sets of practice because the blast obviously gonna catch out two targets. Master supports from Mario, he might consider using this, but Korok jumps up. Mana burn, attack with Vendetta. Jump, 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 Free money. Yeah, nobody wants to drop anything for it, apparently. There's no no slots available, so Mario's sweet. I'll, I'll take that. Bought back, got my own gem back. But the bottom rice goes down and Roshan's alive again too. And the courier just picked up the perseverance for snaking, and you got a void stone also for Korok. Yeah, and then it will also be picking up the abyssal for 1437 here in a short amount of time, because uh, he's got 4800 gold on him casually. Fun choice of items for Korok to actually go in for a Yule scepter here. I like it quite a bit versus uh, any disables would be helpful right now. You would prefer sight of ice, but Yule scepter is like the cheat man's um, sight at this point. Protect him up against the um, the Huskar quite a bit. Or <laughs> other heroes, potentially. Now how we're thinking like Navi US could be losing this? Sorry, just for up the graphs. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's pretty high. And if this Roshan fight goes really badly for them, they're in even more trouble. And uh, you see Korok running in. Now the ward prep. Oh, sneaking through a trick of PKB. Well, that's a good start for Power of Friendship. And they saw it too. The Observer Ward saw it trigger. Well, there's actually this Observer Ward up on the hill, which is only just freshly planted. That's watching their movements and profit. As you're going to try and sprout inside the pimp. They'll see 1437 starting off. It wasn't really the way he wanted to do that, though. He wanted the tree that was on the low ground to actually summon a tree in. So he had vision inside. They still have the same issues, which is they need to go up. Korok, the, the support is soloing Roshan. They've got to go in, but you're going in on a reincarnation target. Now the Chrono, it caught the Earthshaker. Mount Zerb more down inside the pit. This will make a bit of more of a choke point, but now Refresher in the second Chrono. Mario will go down as well. Way too got nuked down by Mystic Flare. Roshan's still not dead just yet. Way too, however, he will die here. Infinity, he'll take a fall. Four heroes on the sideline. Fidget going to buy a little bit of space, but the Mount Zerb are gone. Roshan's on the sideline, and they just call it. Yeah. GG. G is it, 41 minutes and 23 seconds. The Earthshaker dies just for very good measure. Uh, but this will keep Navi US alive in the Iron League qualifier, which will continue tomorrow with 13 to EST. But do not turn off your live streams for the Joint Under Red Stream. We'll be coming back here in a moment to watch the new French teams uh, play up against each other. And I, I say French team, but I found out how they're able to play in uh, the MSI beat it for this region. And it's because Matt is now in Lebanon. <laughs> So because he's in Lebanon, they have two EUs that are allowed to play, which is Sh Sh Shox and Girol, but they're playing with Babar and Monger.